Hello, welcome back to my channel and to today's video, where for those of you regulars, you might notice that I'm in a slightly different filming location for today. I am indeed in the lounge. I've got the fire going, all the cozy vibes, which actually feels quite appropriate for today's video, which is all about cashmere. Now, this is a little bit of a follow-up video from the High Street Cashmere review, I think that's what I called it, video that I did last winter. If you didn't watch that and you are interested in my thoughts on, I think I did five high street cashmere brands or five high street brands that do cashmere. I know cashmere, sorry. I know there's Kos, Marks and Sparks, Arquette, Uniqlo, feel like there was one other but I can't remember it at this time. Anyway, I'll leave a link for that video down below in the description box. Today's video, as many of you have requested, is the next sort of bracket up from High Street Cashmere. So I I was going to call this mid-range, but my last brand, I'm going to be featuring four brands today, which are all brands which I own. My last brand, I think, is a little bit more premium, but I'll go into all of the details when I get to each individual brand. Now, unlike the High Street Cashmere video that I did, I'm not going to use a scoring system. I've just got these four brands and I feel like there's lots of similar qualities to them, so I feel like the scoring would be really similar. But I will go through any pros and cons. I will also tell you guys which is my favorite and my least favorite for whatever reasons. So let's get stuck in with the first brand, which is Almada Label. So Almada Label is a Finnish brand and I discovered them, I think it was probably towards the start of this year, because I know I've featured them in a few videos this year, but I don't think it was last year. Let's just roll with the start of this year. I have got one, two, three, four pieces from them. And this might be a little caveat because I know this is a cashmere video, but controversially, these items are not 100% cashmere. Now, I haven't actually been on their site in a little while just because we've been doing renovation projects, so I haven't really been shopping as such. Um, so I haven't had a look to see if they do any 100% cashmere items, but I will just mention that they are 70% merino wool and 30% organic cashmere. So I'm just gonna put that out there so that you know that fabric makeup and don't then compare it to something which is 100% cashmere which I have coming up. Now, the fact that they are 70% wool doesn't at all bother me. As I've mentioned before, I don't have any kind of intolerance to natural fibers like wool and certainly not to cashmere. In fact, I think my body is drawn and prefers cashmere. So I don't have any issues with that wool content in there. I also think, and I've referenced this before, I spoke about this in the High Street Cashmere video as well. I think that adding in wool to a cashmere blended garment gives it a lot more durability. Cashmere is a very, very, very super fine fiber. Um, and as you'll see from this, it, it does bubble easily. And bubbling is not a sign of bad quality. It is just the nature of that fiber. Um, and I think adding that wool content in there does give it a lot more durability, maybe. I've only had some of these items for a couple of years, so I can't really comment on long-term effect, but I think, in my head, the kind of science would then lead you to think that it would it would just be a longer lifespan for a garment that has some wool in it. I could very well be wrong because I haven't put that to the test. Come back in like 10 years or so and we'll find out. So yes, there is a 70% wool content in here. In terms of softness, that does not at all in any way kind of take away from that soft factor. This is super, super soft. And I have this item here, which is the beige, is it beige or beige? I think it's beige cardigan, which has got those two little pockets that you can see there. I've got the same on here in a lighter color. And then actually underneath, I've got a cashmere vest or tank top, I think it's called, which is in the same kind of coordinating color as this one. I've only got it in this colorway. I don't have it in this torpy color. Um, but that kind of makes it into a little twin set, if you like, and I really like that. It's perfect. I wear these at home all the time, even with just a pair of, you can't see me at the moment. Go on, I'll stand up and I'll show you. Got me joggers on. Got me joggers on. I often wear them at home just with my joggers, kind of a nice, feels a bit more luxury to kind of wear at home when I'm working from home. It's just nice and cozy and they're so soft. They always keep me warm. Cashmere is a temperature regulating, body temperature regulating fiber. So technically it should keep you warm in winter and it should even in theory keep you cool in summer. 
I don't particularly buy into that because I've worn cashmere in summer and I have been a sweaty Betty. So yes, those are the two styles of the cashmere wool blend cardigans that I have and then I have this stripey jumper as well which is a really nice kind of classic piece to have in your wardrobe again another 70 percent 30 percent blend um as a brand i really like them i think they're a nice small brand at the moment i've got nothing against when brands grow and i've also got nothing against larger brands i mean you guys will know that if you've seen any of the brands that I shop with. Um, but at the moment, they're a nice small brand. They don't have loads and loads and loads of options on their website, so you don't kind of get bombarded like some of the other cashmere, specifically cashmere brands that I kind of see out on the market. Um, and yeah, I, I, would, I would highly rate this brand. I think they offer really nice classic pieces. There's nothing which, I don't think there's anything on their website that I don't particularly like. They have just recently branched into coats, which I can't comment on because I haven't seen them, felt them or worn them. Um, and let's be honest, I've got enough coats. So the last thing I need is another coat, but I, I can speak very passionately about their cashmere knitwear because it is really beautiful. It's thick as well, and again, that might be down to the wool content, super soft. I have washed many of the items that I've got on. They wash very well. They do bubble, of course, as with any cashmere item, they will bubble, especially in friction areas, which is usually under the arm. Quick little debubble and you're good to go. And if you keep on top of that, you'll find that over time the debubbling decreases. And again, I think the bubbling will decrease more with something that has a wool blend in it just because of that fineness of the cashmere fibers. Um, now in terms of price, the cardigans that I have and the jumper here are £295 each. And the tank top that I've got on underneath is £145. Um, so I think that is, if we compare to just costs, uh, for example, which a lot of their cashmere, the chunky cashmere, which I think you could liken to this, is 220 to 240 pounds, depending on the design on their website. This is only a little bit more. So I would definitely put this at the mid range kind of price point. And although these items have been gifted to me, uh, I can honestly say that I think I'd be happy to pay that amount for just now seeing the quality and seeing the designs and having worn, tried and tested these pieces. So yes, that Almada label is a winner from me. Now I'm gonna move on to my next brand, which is the Curated. Okay, so for those of you that aren't familiar with me and my relationship to the Curated, the Curated was a brand that I came across or it might have even been they came across me and we just sort of started chatting. Um, the owner of the brand is called Nicola. We're really good friends now. And I was wearing the brand for, I think maybe like two or three years. And then she approached me and during lockdown, this was one good thing that came out of lockdown for me at least. Um, and hopefully for those of you that have the blazers, uh, we were chatting and we ended up doing a collaboration together where me being me, I love my blazers, and Nicola wanted to include a really classic, you know, sort of the creme de la creme of blazers in her collection for the curated. So we teamed up together, I designed the blazer, and Nicola's company, the curated, make it, and we are now, gosh, I'm trying to think, we did black, we did grey, we did light grey, dark grey, I think, we did two different navies, we've done a camel, now we've done a linen and a khaki. So I think we're now on the eighth blazer in the eighth colorway and uh, fabric that we do. So the majority of them are wool, merino wool. I think we even did one which was like a camely color that we included a cashmere blend fabric in. So unlike Almada label, the curated cashmere is 100% cashmere. However, a similarity is that they are also manufactured in China. Now I know that some people might have a little bit of a negative view of Chinese manufacturing. Perhaps your point of view may be that it's cheap, it's not good quality. And I think I might have shared that same sort of thought process as well a few years ago. Um, but Nicola's been really good at kind of showing me through because our blazers are manufactured in China. She's been really good at showing me through the manufacturing process, all of the auditing process and all that kind of stuff. So 
I kind of have a little bit more knowledge on it now, which I think for me is quite fortunate because obviously I've had that little insider, insider knowledge, if you like, from a brand that actually uses factories in China. Um, so what I'm trying to say is it's not always cheap and bad, you know, quality items that are made in China. You can have really premium factories. So let's say, for example, you've got a brand made in Italy, let's say Gucci. And don't quote me on Gucci because I don't know the manufacturing process, but I do know that lots of luxury brands, they might say made in Paris, made in Italy, da da da. But actually a lot of brands manufacture their bags in China and the finishing touches are then often made in Italy or Paris or wherever. And that's why they can have that stamp on there. So it is a little bit of a loophole in sort of having something made in somewhere that perhaps might be a bit cheaper and then finishing it off with those slightly more luxury touches. So yes, the curated, it is made in China, but it is beautiful, beautiful cashmere, 100% cashmere, as I've mentioned. So I do find that it bubbles more. Again, not a quality issue. So this here, I have got the classic crew neck, which is your basic round neck jumper, no bells and whistles, just a very, very classic piece. This is 240. So I suppose you could compare that to the Almada label, which it is thicker, but that's because they've got that wall content in there. Your 295 for a cashmere blend, this is 240. So it's pretty good value, I think. Now they do also have a cardigan, which is very, very similar, minus the pockets. This is quite a similar colour actually as well to the top one that I've got from Almada label. So the only design um, difference is that it doesn't have those patch pockets on the front there, but it does have that deep v-neck, the buttons and the ribbed cuffs and hem. And the price of the curated cashmere cardigan is 240. So again, you can kind of have a look at brands like Cos in the High Street cashmere video. Their price points are around about 220 to 240 for the thick cashmere, which is very much this kind of cashmere. So I think that's, again, is a really good value. Although I've kind of put it in this mid price point bracket because it is more of a luxury item. I still think it is really good value when you compare to a high street brand. And one thing I really like about the curated is that they will often release items. This is something we do for all of our blazer releases. They do them on pre-release. So basically you can pre-order an item and then they know how many to make. So you don't get the item immediately, but that does mean that they have less stock wastage, which is always a pro. So I've got the crew neck, I've got the cardigan, and I've also got here, they do have a little range of cashmere t-shirts and I have one of those upstairs in cream. In fact, I think I wore that during the, I think I wore it underneath the really chunky cream jumper that I did the decorating for Christmas video in. Um, so they have some basics as well, kind of good layering pieces, but also nice items to go underneath a cashmere cardigan as well. So there's also this little vest. And um, now I realize I haven't spoke about sizing. I will pop all of that information down below in the description box for you. So I always do a clear layout of my sizing and then after each item I'll write what size and how I think it fits. So all of that information is down below in the description box. Right, I'm gonna move on to my next brand now. And this is actually, I've only got one item of theirs in cashmere. The brand is, and I think I'm gonna pronounce this right, Laline. It's spelled L-I-G-N-E, La and then Lean. So this is a New York based brand and everything is New York designed, but again, made in China. And it's a very similar price point, I think, to Almada label. It's just slightly, slightly more. Now, this item is, I think, about two years old and I haven't been able to find something similar on their website at the moment. Uh, but this was one of their six-ply cashmere jumpers. Now, I haven't... I've looked on all the other brands and they don't mention anything about ply. So I don't know if Laline were just really wanting to shout about the 
fact that this is really thick cashmere because it is, it's beautiful. This is 100% cashmere and Laline is a brand that specializes in stripes. I don't think they've actually made a statement to say that, but they do have a lot of stripes on their website and that goes for any of their knitwear because they do a lot of cotton knitwear for summer and they also have wool knitwear. But of course, me being me, I'm naturally drawn to the cashmere. So this piece unfortunately is no longer available, but I'll leave a link down below to their website if anyone wants to just check them out. They have quite a big celebrity following and that's often something I'm not really a fan of, but this brand was stocked on, or is stocked rather, on net portain and I think I ordered one piece from them and I just fell in love with it. And I then realised that they had quite a big celebrity following because they've got a lot of photo shoots on their website where they've got various celebrities wearing their jumpers. The cashmere is by far the softest out of all of the brands that I've got here and I have no idea why that is. It may well just be this piece. I haven't got another piece to compare it to but it is, oh my God, so soft. Um, it feels so thick, so, so soft, so sumptuous. It almost feels like you just want to bury your head in it. If they made a blanket out of this, I would be all over that. Um, so yeah, price point wise, slightly higher than Almada label. I believe a jumper of this kind of value would be about £312. I had to do that on currency conversion because of course it is a New York brand. So most of the prices on their direct website are all in dollars. But in terms of UK stockists, you can find them on Netaporte. And I'm not sure if they're available on matches also. They might be. If they are, I'll leave a link down below in the description box. But if you like stripes, any kind of Breton stripe, this is definitely a brand that you should take a look at because it is a very stripe orientated brand. Right, on to my final brand, currently swathed in a garment bag. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, this last brand will considerably go up in price. That's gonna sort of raise the average price point of this video. Um, so the brands that I have, inside this garment bag is the Scottish brand Johnston's of Elgin. Now for anyone that's been following us for the last four years, I think it was at the end of 2019, Simon and I were both invited up to Scotland to go and have a tour of the Johnston's of Elgin site. Um, so we saw their whole manufacturing process, we spoke to so many people, we literally met every member of like every employee that they have or at least that they had working on the day we were there um, and it was such a nice community vibe now I've full disclosure I've never been to any other factory or anything like that so this was a completely new situation for me but both Simon and I really enjoyed it we thought it was really interesting um, so again full disclosure you know we'd have a little bit of a link to Johnston's of Elgin in that we have worked with them before and yes we did go up and do this whole factory tour um, and yeah it was so good and we did actually do a video on that trip so if anyone's curious and wants to kind of see kind of what we saw then I will leave another link down below in the description box for that video as well so let me just get these out of the garment bag now admittedly I am not the number one fan of Johnston's of Elgin in this house that is Simon now Simon had never heard of this brand until we were invited up there I'd heard of them but I hadn't actually bought anything from them because admittedly the price point is on the higher end uh, Simon now, their number one fan, he even gets, he got a Christmas card from them the other day and he was like waving it around, I've got a Christmas card from Johnson's of Elgin. I was like, yeah, no wonder you literally spend all your money there. He's a big fan, normally always shops in sales so he'll be on there very soon. If they have like a Boxing Day sale, he'll be on there. And the majority of his knitwear, and he's not a big shopper, he doesn't have excessive amounts of clothing like I do, but the majority of his knitwear is all Johnston's of Elgin. And I think what Simon appreciates and what I can appreciate as well, although it's not always my number one ethos, is that it is made in Scotland and therefore it is a GB brand, a British brand. And the vibe that we got when we were there is that they did just feel so wholesome is the only kind of word I can think, even though they're literally manufacturing items for the biggest, most premium luxury brands. They felt so down to earth. All of their employees live in the local area. Some of them have been there for 
decades working. Some of them generations of their families have been working at the Johnstons of Elgin site. So yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those brands that kind of draws you in because they've got that real sort of community and, and family feel to it. So the items that I've got here are a hoodie and some joggers. So I have loungewear. We also have a no, we have two blankets from Johnston's Velgen, but they're wool. These are cashmere. And Simon has got a really big, thick, chunky cashmere jumper and some other wool ones. And I think one other... Oh, he's got cashmere joggers and a cashmere um, hoodie as well. And I think he's also got some other cashmere basics and some socks. So, yes, there is a, there is a fair amount of Johnston's Velgen. Now, in terms of price point, I think this tracksuit here cost its old now it's four four years old so unfortunately it's not available online anymore but i've had a look at their current tracksuits and they come over to just over a thousand pounds for the full set although they are sold separately so you can kind of mix and match just buy one item if you wanted so price point wise they're up there they are definitely in the premium range now these pieces that I have here, I know they're not available anymore. They are soft. They actually don't feel as soft as the Laleen cashmere jumper that I have. They're not as thick either, but then having said that, this is only loungewear, which you don't normally tend to get really thick joggers and hoodies. It is beautifully made. And of course, Simon and I have seen where all of these items are made. We've seen the care. We've seen the whole process on how they keep their waste reduced as well. There were some really cool things about how they reduce their waste. So yeah, I think, I think the kind of takeaway from Johnston's of Elgin is that when you have a brand that has all of those values, the way that they, they even had a program for educating the offspring of the alpaca farmers and the goat farmers and all of that kind of stuff. So for any of their fabrics and fibers, you know, whether it be, they even had Vicuna there, which I don't know if anyone's heard of that. You might wanna Google Vicuna. It's like a super, super premium fiber. Um, but they have all of these programs to really support the farmers and herders that are out in Mongolia. So I think when you're looking at brands that have all of these things, they're paying above, you know, a living wage to all of their employees. They offer so many benefits that does then in turn raise the cost of the items that they're producing, um, which is why fast fashion, high street fashion is the price that it is. Um, now granted cashmere obviously is more of a luxury product anyway um, so that will always inflate the price regardless of if you're on the high street or in a more premium luxury brand like Johnston's but um, yes it is definitely in the higher price point but I think it is justified. So yes that is my final brand Johnston's of Elgin. Definitely one you need to save up for but a winner nonetheless. Now, out of the four brands that I have had a little chat about today, if I were to opt for a favorite, I think, I think I'd go to each, well, I'd definitely go to Johnston's of Elgin perhaps for something different in comparison to the other three brands because Johnston's of Elgin has homewares, it has menswear, so there's a whole thing. Laline does also have menswear and children's wear as well, I'll just add that in. But I think if I were to pick a favourite brand for typical sort of Emma outfits, I think it would have to be... Almada label and I know that might be a little bit controversial given that it isn't a hundred percent cashmere but I think adding in as I've said before that wool mix in there just makes it a little bit more durable and I really like the cardigans and you know what I'm 38 now I'm probably going to be living life in cardigans aren't I so yes right that concludes today's video for my mid to maybe slightly higher price pointed cashmere thank you as always for watching and i will see you next time <laughs>